12 volts or 24? Now that's a very common question for anyone building their own camper. Both systems have their merits and I'm going to discuss with you the, the options between the two and explain to you what I did when building my camper here. converting a smaller vehicle like a Mercedes Sprinter, VW Camper or any vehicle with 12 volt electrics I would suggest sticking with a 12 volt system. It's a good idea to have a fit a split charge relay. This is in fact a small box that enables you to charge the leisure batteries from your engine's alternator once the starter batteries have reached a certain voltage. Sticking with 12 volt makes adding a split charge relay very simple and cost effective. 12 volt system will be simple to install and being a relatively small vehicle with a, with a restriction on weight you probably won't be installing lots of wiring and appliances so the possible cost savings to be gained by a 24 volt system will be insignificant. Sticking with 12 volt also means you can use just one leisure battery this can be a significant cost saving. It's probably better to have one large battery than two smaller batteries while in parallel. This is because one bad battery can destroy a good battery. And buying one large battery will be cheaper than buying two smaller. There are also more options in the 12 volt range of products. Overall 12 volts is a simpler system to install and will save you money. If you have a larger vehicle and it probably has 24 volt electric system to start the engine, I would suggest going with 24 volts. As I mentioned with the 12 volt system, this makes adding split relay charge easy and cost effective. Now the lower voltage, the bigger cable needed for a given number of amps. For example, you need a 2 to 2.5 mil squared cable to run a 300 watt light bar on a 12 volt system. To run the same light bar on a 24 volt system, you could use a 1 millimeter squared cable. So by having a 24 volt system your cable size is half, saving money, weight and space. Now in a bigger vehicle like mine, it's very likely you'll want to also have 12 volts in your truck as well as 24 volt and 240 volt for those in the UK and in 120 volt for those in the US. As previously mentioned, there is a wider range of products in the 12 volt line. Adding a 12 volt system is easy to do with the use of a DC-DC converter. The system does become a little more complicated as you will now need a fuse box on both the 12 volt and 24 volt system. Adding an inverter and solar is easy to do no matter if you choose a 12 or 24 volt. How to wire a 24 volt battery. So you've probably heard the terms series and parallel. Wiring two 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries in series will give you 24 volt at 100 amp hours. Wiring the same batteries in parallel will give you 12 volt at 200 amps. Essentially both options have the same amount of power but higher voltage is more suitable for anything that uses lots of power. Here we have two batteries wired in series. So this is the positive. The negative goes to the positive of the second battery and then the negative of the second battery becomes the negative of the 24 volt battery bank. Good practice to use these uh, insulation covers and put your cables in some protective ducting. You don't want to short these cables out. This is a very simple split charge relay. Now this one's actually made by Victron and it doesn't matter with your 12 volt or 24 volt, it automatically senses which system you use. So this is connected to the leisure batteries and to the truck batteries. And this particular one has the advantage of being able to start your truck batteries on your leisure batteries by the flick of a switch. So I'm now going to show you my electrical system. Now it can be as complicated or as simple as you like. At a first glance mine may look complicated but once I explain to you what everything is you will see that it's really very simple. There's good practice to fit an isolator switch between the batteries and the rest of the system on the positive cable. After the isolation switch, I've then connected the positive to a distribution post. 
From the batteries, the positive cable comes straight in to this isolator switch here. From the isolator switch, as mentioned, we go to this positive terminal post. Now we have a negative terminal post here. As you can see, all the cables are connected to this post. So from this positive distribution post, we go up to some fuses. Now we've got a 6mm 50 amp cable here. And we go to a fuse, this is a fuse for the 24 volt line. This cable goes up to the 24 volt fuse box. And this one is a fuse for the 12 volt line. The same cable, or same type of cable, go up to the, to the 12 volt fuse box via the DC DC converter. Now the reason I fuse these is it is possible that you put so much load on the, one of these fuse boxes that this cable would struggle, as in you would be more than 50 amps, so this would start to burn. So we've put a 40 amp fuse in here to prevent that from happening. If we were to put too much load on, this fuse would blow before the cable would get hot. Now on the 20 on the 12 volt side, we've actually put a 20 a 25 amp fuse. Now the reason for that is this DC DC converter is rated at 25 amps. So if we if we were getting get close to that, this would pop before we do any damage to the Orion. However, this is probably known Victron got his own safety device in it. So from this fuse we go up to the 24 volt fuse box. Each item is connected individually and I've labelled it and is fused. Now again ensure you use the correct size fuse for the correct appliance and cable used. These cables here are 2 mil. These are good for about 25 amps. From the 12 volt which are these the uh, Victron Orion which is the DC DC converter. So we put 24 volts in but here we are taking out 12 volts into the 12 volt fuse box. And again we mark, mark everything on here and fuse everything correctly. So now we need to do some of the negatives. Now in my case I have a shunt installed. Now this measures what's going on. So in this unit here I can see how much power comes in, how much goes out, how many hours I have left at the current rate of consumption. And to do this you have to put it through a shunt. Now this is a shunt down here. So my negative cable comes in at the bottom of the shunt. And again I've put a cover over it because you wouldn't have an accident and connect accidentally short your positive and negative. So after the shunt we go to another distribution post where we connect all the rest of the systems. So from this post we go going up to these bus bars. Now again we have a cover on the bus bars. You want to always want to cover any exposed metal that's live. So the bus bar is simply a place to connect all your negatives up. Now I have two. I've actually wired 112 volt 124. But it doesn't matter if your system's 24, 12 or both. You can connect them all. All the negatives can be connected together. I've done it separately just because I needed more space to put the wires. So I did it just for simplicity. But you can only need one bus bar to add your 12 and 24 volt together. If you're using a 12 volt system, you can skip the 24 to 12 volt converter stage and just use 12 volt fuse box. Now this big blue box here, this block box of magic, is a battery charger, solar charger and inverter all in one. As well as having the circuit breakers, it's a nice bit of kit. Now this particular one, this is a 24 volt 1600 watt inverter. This costs about £1200. And personally I would recommend them because this Although there are three, but you could buy all three parts individually. This, this is greater than the sum of the three components installed inside it. For example, if you had a generator running, it will combine the battery power and generator power to provide you more power if necessary. So, for example, I've welded off my inverter because it's combining the generator power and the inverter power together. So I'm getting about 3,600 watts. Now all these cables down here. 
these are the two power cables connecting this blue box up. And then we have solar cables and in the back here we have the 240 volt distribution. So the system really isn't as complicated as it may first look. Now lots of these fuse wires actually come into these switches here. A lot of power in Matilda. This Matilda's my truck. There's over three to 400 meters of cable inside this truck alone. So as you can see, these cables go up here. And along some of the walls, there are bunches of cables like this. So on a 24 volt system, you really can have lots of appliances and distribute lots of power. One thing I should add is I do have some rather large batteries. I have 220 amp hour batteries. So that's two batteries, 220 amp hour combined together to be a 24 volt, 220 amp hour battery pack. Cable size. No matter which system you choose, make sure you spec your cables correctly. Cables are usually rated in amps. To do this, divide watts by voltage to get amps. For example, you have a 300 watt light bar. 300 divided by 12 is 25. That's 25 amps. So you need to get a cable capable of 25 amps. So you're probably looking at a 2.5 mil cable. 300 divided by 24 is 12.5 amps. So now you can half your cable. So you're probably looking at a one, a one mil, possibly one and a half mil, you want to add, add a margin of safety. One other consideration is voltage drop. The longer the cable, the less volts get to make it to the other end. Imagine a tunnel one meter long and you send 12 little volts into the tunnel. They all come out at the other end. Now send those 12 volts into to a 10 meter tunnel. You may find only 11 volts make it to the other end. Two ways to solve this. Send more volts into the tunnel, for example 24, or increase the size of the tunnel. Some appliances are voltage sensitive and won't function properly if they're not getting enough volts. Now there is also the option for 48 volts. This would be more suitable to much larger systems than off-grid homes. Hopefully this has all made sense. If you have any questions, please add them to the comments and I will answer all and every question I can. For more how-to videos and to see my epic travels in Matilda, subscribe below and I will see you next time.